why did you get breast cancer? You might be asking yourself if you ate or drank something that caused your cancer. Maybe it was the stress level you were under. Maybe it was some kind of trauma from your past. If you only knew what caused cancer, then you could prevent it, right? If this sounds like you, then you need to watch this video. I'm showing you six things that are known to cause breast cancer. Now we don't know every single reason why cancer happens, but there are some clear triggers. The good news is that you can avoid them in the future and help prevent a recurrence. You have control. Starting with number one, alcohol. Alcohol is linked to increasing your risk of cancer. It's rated as a grade one carcinogen. It directly stimulates cells to become cancerous. But alcohol can also increase the amount of estrogen in your body. And we know that this can also help cancer cells grow. Now, some people will say that their granny drank her entire life and she lived to be 109 years old, no cancer at all. And yes, this can be true. Not everyone who drinks alcohol will develop cancer and not everyone who avoids it will stay cancer free. But we do know that drinking alcohol increases your risk of cancer. It's kind of like wearing a seatbelt. If you wear a seatbelt and get in a car accident, you are not guaranteed to survive that car accident or be injury free. But we do know that if you're wearing a seatbelt and in a car accident, your chances of walking away injury free are a lot better. It's the same with alcohol. If you drink less or not at all, you're not guaranteed to stay cancer free. But we do know that it will help lower your cancer risk. If you can completely stop drinking alcohol, that will lower your risk the most. But I totally understand if you wanna live a balanced life while still lowering your risk of cancer. So let's be practical and realistic if you don't wanna completely eliminate alcohol. As a cancer survivor myself, I still drink alcohol occasionally, maybe on New Year's Eve or a night out with my friends. Life is meant to be lived and alcohol is how we participate socially at times. If you don't feel like you can completely eliminate alcohol, then let me give you some numbers to help guide your choices. If you drink less than seven drinks per week, so that would be less than one drink per day. Well, then you're increasing your risk of cancer by about 9%. As a cancer survivor, that feels significant. A 9% increase is not something that I'm comfortable with. But if you drink less than four drinks per week, so that's less than half a drink a day, then you would increase your risk of cancer by about 4%. That feels much more manageable. If you drink even less, then presumably your risk would be even lower. And now that you know these exact numbers, now you can make your own decision on what level of risk that you're willing to take on. Okay, and on to the second thing that could contribute to a breast cancer diagnosis, an unhealthy body weight. This is hard to hear, I know. As a cancer survivor, I gained 20 pounds during my cancer treatment. The steroid, the surgeries, the hormone imbalances, all of it contributed to weight gain. There are so many factors against you. And many women, including myself, well, we stress eat during your cancer treatment or recovery. You might turn to food as a coping strategy. This is definitely what I did during my own treatment. But ultimately, it does increase your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence, so it's worth taking the steps to get to a healthy body weight. Increased obesity rates among women worldwide has led to an increase in breast cancer rates. Excess body fat disrupts your hormone production, causes inflammation in your body, and increases your estrogen levels. All factors as to why an increase in your body weight increases your risk of breast cancer. Now, you may be thinking, yes, I would love to drop some weight, but how do I do that? With so many things stacked against you, what do you do? You know that lowering your weight will lower your risk of breast cancer or a breast cancer recurrence, so you wanna make some meaningful changes. If that feels like you and you're ready to take the next step, then apply for the Cancer Freedom Program. This is a step-by-step -step program specifically designed to help women lose weight after a cancer diagnosis. You can click the link below to apply. Okay, so the next thing that causes breast cancer is hormones. Now, unfortunately, there's not much you can do to control this one. Certain types of breast cancer are hormone driven. That means the hormones in your body actually promote cancer cell growth. Factors like early menstruation, late menopause, or hormonal treatment, they can increase your risk of breast cancer. But look, there's not much you can do about that. As a woman, you start your period during puberty. You don't have control over that. Same with menopause. There's not much you can actively change here. The next thing that increases your risk of breast cancer is processed foods. 
Eating a diet that's high in processed or packaged foods, well, that increases your risk of breast cancer. Now, many people think of processed foods as fast food. And yes, this is true. Loaded with trans fats and sodium, this will increase your risk of breast cancer. But there are other processed foods as well, foods that are packaged and available for purchase. They're overly processed and they can increase your risk of cancer. As a general practice, it's best to shop on the outside perimeter of your grocery store because this is where fresh produce is kept and you won't find processed foods here. This will help you keep with fresh whole foods and will lower your cancer risk. The next thing that's known to cause breast cancer is genetics. But again, not too much that we can actively change about this. Mutations like BRCA1 and BRCA2 are known to significantly increase your risk of breast cancer. We know that about 10% of breast cancer is associated with a genetic risk. The other 90% of breast cancer is caused by your food, your lifestyle, or unknown factors. So it would be wrong to think that cancer is all up to your genetics. You can still make a lot of impact here too. The next thing that's known to cause breast cancer is tobacco. This shouldn't be any big surprise here. I think many people know that tobacco causes cancer. Tobacco alters cellular DNA and actually changes cellular function, which leads to cancer. Now with these changes in cellular DNA, this is how cancer cells are formed. Any amount of tobacco will increase your risk of cancer. Okay, and the last factor known to cause breast cancer is being sedentary. A lack of physical activity contributes to cancer cell growth. Exercising and being physically fit, well, that is where I invest most of my energy as a cancer survivor. I know that I can lower my risk of cancer recurrence by up to 59% through exercise alone. After finishing cancer treatment, I started dedicating myself to exercise to lower my risk of cancer. And here I am, seven years later, still cancer-free. There are a few theories here as to why exercise lowers your risk of breast cancer. The first is that it helps with insulin resistance. There's a thought that insulin resistance plays a role in the development of cancer. So by exercising, you get better control over your insulin levels. Next is that exercise reduces inflammation in your body over a long-term period. With less inflammation, there's less cancer risk. Whatever the reason behind this might be, we know that you can significantly lower your cancer risk. A triple negative breast cancer survivor that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program, well, she really struggled with not having any type of treatment after her chemo ended. She knew that women with hormone positive breast cancer, well, they were offered tamoxifen or anastrozole after their chemo treatment, and they could be on that for five to 10 years to help prevent a cancer recurrence but she wouldn't be offered anything because her cancer wasn't hormone positive. So here's what we did instead. We created a customized cancer freedom report to effectively lower her risk of breast cancer through factors that she could control. This became her cancer remission or treatment plan. She started feeling confident and secure in what she was doing and how she was lowering her cancer risk. She had a plan in place and she was following it. And three years later, she was still cancer free. We know that exercise has powerful influences on lowering your cancer risk, but exercise has so many positives all around. For example, targeted exercise can also lower your hot flashes and it can improve your energy. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it works. Plus, if used in the right way, you can lower your body weight through exercise. Now all of that, and we haven't even considered the positive effects that exercise has on your heart health or your mental health. We know that exercise can make a huge difference for cancer survivors, but how do you start and what do you do? Now that you know about what causes breast cancer, the next thing that you need to know is how to start using targeted exercise to lower your cancer risk. That's why I've linked up this next video for you here. This is the best place to start. Click the link here. I'll see you in the next video.